In this video, you're going to learn how to break down compute costs by individual queries. And then you're going to use that data to allow your team to identify high cost operations. And we're going to do this in a four step process. Firstly, we're going to use a SQL query to retrieve the data. Then we're going to take that SQL table and then we're going to convert it into a pandas data frame. After which we're going to perform some data preparation and filtering. And finally, we're going to perform some data visualization and exploration. And so without further ado, let's dive in. So we're going to start by retrieving the data and to provide some additional insights on the query cost, we're going to use a SQL query that will allow you to get the credits used data column. And that will be obtained from the metering history view from the account usage schema. And then we're going to merge associated user database schema and warehouse information from the query history view table. And so this is the SQL query that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and run it. So you're going to see here that we're merging the query history along with the metering history. And then we're going to take mostly the query ID, query text, start and end time, username, database name, schema name, warehouse name, and also the warehouse size. And then we're going to merge that with the metering history table, particularly the credits used column. And for this particular query, we're going to take a one week look into the data. Give it a short moment. All right, and so here we have about 1.2 million results, which is the number of rows here. And then you're going to notice we have the query ID, the query text, the start and end time, username, name schema name, warehouse name, warehouse size, the amount of credits that has been used. And then also the execution time, which we then converted to seconds as mentioned here. All right. So this is the SQL query cell. And then we're going to take that and then we're going to append two pandas, uh, command in order to make it into a, a pandas data frame. Let's go ahead and run it. So the, notice that this is a Python cell. All right, and so we get the exact same data table, but then in pandas data frame format. All right, now the fun stuff. We're going to create an interactive slider widget, and then we're going to perform some data preparation and also filtering. So we're going to have a interactive slider widget using the Streamlit Python library, which allows you to add kind of like a front end UI to your Python code. And then we're going to have that uh, input widget to trigger the filtering of the data frame. And so we're going to perform some data reshaping in order to make it into a format that is suitable for creating other data visualizations like heat map, bubble chart, um, and also a stacked bar chart, which we'll see in a short moment. All right, let's run the code here, which is about 75 lines of code and We've also added some pretty cool logic here, like about 25 lines, as you will see here. You could also, you know, replace this with a simple expander box below. You could just delete this part out and then you could delete the expand value here or replace it with the value of true or false. Um, and that should be able to save you 20 lines of code. Um, but I think this is very interesting because it allows you to use a single button click in order to expand the following data frame. Otherwise you have to expand both data frames individually. So let's have a look. So we're going to have input widget that will allow you to do some selection of the time duration. So here we're going to select the number of days that we're going to analyze. So if we move the slider widget, it will recompute. And then it will perform filtering specifically on the data frame. And then you're going to notice that this data frame here that you see is based on the last six days. And we also have a variable uh, selection 
select box, which is like a, a drop down menu. So here you could select warehouse name, the username, or the warehouse size. So it's the variable that you are investigating and also want to see which pretty much influence the cost of the query. And then the metric that you're going to see could be account, uh, which is the frequency count per hour, or you could also select the total credit that has been consumed during each hour. So, so as I mentioned, right, you could delete these 20 lines of code, which will essentially just show you the two expander box here. Right, so you have to click it individually in order to expand both of the data frame. Or with the logic that we've created, you could just do a single button click here to collapse the data frame, although it will rewind everything. And then both data frames has been collapsed. If you click again, and then both the data frame will then be expanded. So a pretty cool feature, I think. All right, now, is the data visualization part. Let's have a look at it. So, um, yeah, so actually the summary statistic table, it's not created here. So we're, we're just gonna take this out. Heat map and that's also like bubble chart and the stat bar chart. There you go. Let's run it. All right, this is the heat map. It's one of my favorite data visualization uh, because it allows you to look at, you know, like three variables at the same time. So you have one over here in the X axis and then you have one at the Y axis and then you have the, the value that you are looking at, which is the number of counts. And so here we have the warehouse name uh, as mentioned here, and then we're going to see the influence of time for each of the warehouse name so that we'll be able to see which time is kind of like the peak hours for consumption for our queries. But yeah, you could also look at the, the credit that has been used instead of the count. Uh, but mostly they're correlated, right? So if the frequency of the count is higher, then it also tells you that at that specific hour, you're going to likely consume a lot of credit if it has been um, used frequently there. So yeah, it does have a positive correlation there. All right. And so let's have a look further. Let's have a look at the stack bar chart. And yeah, it allows you to look at it over a series of time. So for each of the hour, we're going to see which hours are, you know, are the peak hours. So you're going to see here that we have the early morning and then we have like, um, after lunch, right at two to three o'clock that is peaking. And for the stack bar chart, you have the, the various, a legend that will tell you which warehouse is accounting for modes of the consumption or usage. So if you hover on it, you're going to see the labels for the warehouse name, which is coming from the two tip parameter here. Let's have a look at the bubble plot. So we're using Altair for creation of these data visualization. I think this is also a pretty fun way to look at the data. I think it pretty much gives you the same information that you would get out of the heat map. Um, but yeah, another. Uh, variation of that. So yeah, pretty cool um, for you to try it out as well. And yeah, the size of the circles is as a function of the, the query count. And yeah, so that's the count. Let's have a look at the chart again. If you change the metric and make it total credits used. And then let's make the warehouse name to be something else. Let's have a look at the username and the total credits that, that has been consumed by each of the user. And this is based on six days. Let's do the five days, for example. And let's have a look at the heat map again. Let's run it again. Okay, so you get to see each of the user and then the time that 
each of these are, is, you know, consuming the credits at. And then let's have a look at the stacked bar charts. Okay, so you have the early morning, the afternoon, which are the peak hours for the consumption. And if you hover through each, you'll be able to see which of the user are using the queries the most. And we also have the bubble charts. Yep. And so you can see the query count um, as a function of the size. And you could dig deeper into, you know, like the, the query text from here, and then you could perform further um, analysis of the queries for which the user or the warehouse has run. And so pretty interesting insights that you could gain from this. And yeah, let me know in the comment section, which other notebooks that you would like me to create. And if you reach this far, please drop a cloud emoji. And as always, happy coding.